what's up everybody from the grower here I'm gonna cover a video about organics versus salt base for my shoulder you can see I got some dry green organics and some advanced nutrients pH perfect I've used both of them and they are both really good but I'm gonna cover some uh, some pros and cons let people know you know the choices that they're making when they make these choices and uh, do it so when uh when you're using organic fertilizer when you buy it it's, it's the pros basically i'm gonna go over for organics is uh it's like a food it's like sitting down eating a plate of dinner it's kind of you know the equivalent so you get your nutrients by digestion in a sense and um it's a more natural method it, it, it's more sustainable for the planet it's the way that Mother Nature kind of does things in a very complex way. Um, it's eco-friendly. It's just one that's one of the really, I'm, I'm all about saving the planet, you know, helping local shops, all that kind of stuff. Um, beyond being good for the, the planet and stuff, it has really good water retention. Um, it doesn't overfeed your plants as easily as uh, synthetic nutrients. You know, like, you, you can, you have a little more leeway with feeding. But, uh, also having good biodiversity and, uh, microbiology in your soil can help. You can use less organic nutrients because the bio, um, the biodiversity and the bioorganisms in your soil, they will actually break down the nutrients more and make it more available to the plant. Um, some of the cons about Organics are uh, it's a slow release, so it, you can't just feed your plant and expect results right away. You kind of have to anticipate things or be able to catch things right in the beginning. Um, it is a little more difficult unless you just have a good recipe or want to you know do the the more basic way, more simple ways. Um, the ratios are way less accurate. Like I could measure a cup of it out and pack the cup really tight or I can measure a cup of it out and it could be pretty loose packed in the end I'll have two different amounts it's not one cup and one cup um, so your feeding ratios are much less accurate but that also doesn't matter as much because it's harder to overfeed so it kind of works hand in hand um, you can't you can't mix it in the water most of the time I don't know many if any organics that are water soluble so you end up having to top dress and pre-mix your soil, which can be a lot of work. You gotta get hands on, and it takes time if you have a lot of plants. Um, it can just be a pain in the ass, but it's not the worst. Like I like getting in there and getting hands on with them. Um, your root zone temperature needs to be a little bit, should be a little bit more warmer when using organics. It makes them again more available to the plant which uh, is just going to work in your favor in every way. Um, you're going to have to use less, there's less chances of, you know, burning your plant and overfeeding it in the end. It might actually just not be picking up the nutrients that, you, that could be in the soil, but its ability to be feeding on them could be inhibited by something else. Um, again, when you, use, or when you use organics, you're feeding the soil, the soil feeds the plant. When you use synthetics or salt base, it, it, it's kind of like force feeding the plant. It goes directly to it. It's, you have less to worry about and less to think about. And still get good results. Now on to um, the salt base. So they're, some of the things that I really liked about them was they're fast acting. Like you could get almost instant, well not almost, but damn near all instant results. If I had like a nitrogen deficiency and I fed my plant, Two days later, at most, I'm going to see some better health and, and turnaround because of it. Um, they're accurate and really specific. Every, every dosage, as long as you're shaking your bottles properly, it uh, it's pretty well going to be the same thing. One mil is one mil. You can't overpack it or underpack it. or You don't have to worry about that kind of stuff with, with the synthetics. Um, they're easy to apply to big and small crops. So, like... I could take one pot and, you know, mix up my necessary amount of water and water it, or I could fill up an irrigation system and have 
hundreds or thousands of plants even all in one system that get watered. Um, and that can be really convenient, it can save you a lot of time, but then measuring out each nutrient can be a pain in the ass. Um, synthetics were designed specifically, remember they're not organic, they're not natural, they were designed, and they were designed with high value crops in mind, things that people are going to be keeping and using and put value on to sum it up, but uh, cannabis is in there, so these nutrients are basically designed for cannabis and plants like cannabis. Um, they interact with it very well and they just do pretty well exactly what you want. But uh, the downside of the synthetics is it depletes your soil nutrition. So like if everybody in the world, all the farmers and everything, if we all switch to synthetic nutrients, our soil with the overall, it would die in the end. We would lose our microbiology and biodiversity in the soil and then a lot of bacteria would die, good bacteria would die. Um, there's a lot of benefits that are beyond us and our plants to using organics and that's kind of one of the reasons that I like them. Um, when you are feeding with salt base, you don't just, you know, mix up your soil and put your nutrients in it and wait four weeks, you have to, every, every couple days, every week, you have to measure out your nutrients and, and apply them to the plant or the rubber bar if it's in its own, you know, you don't have to get in there and mix hands on into the soil, but you do have to measure out nutrients all the time and it can, depending on how many bottles you have, it can be a lot, like it can suck up a lot of time. And uh, that was one of the reasons that I kind of wanted to get away from them, is I didn't like measuring things out all the time, that was a pain in the ass. For me, everyone's different. Um, you have the potential for uh, salt buildup and toxin buildup, depending on the nutrients that you're using and uh, what's in them. Overall, that kind of goes hand in hand with killing the, the natural microbiology and stuff in, in the soil. As the salts build up, it just makes it harder for everything else to live. And uh, in the end, it just kind of kills your soil, makes it no good. You can do things to get the salts out of the soil, but it's almost more cost effective and time effective to just use a new soil. Um, one of the things I like about organics is I can just throw a recharge pack into my soil. It's almost like a, when your plant's all said and done, you cut it down, dry out the soil, and you just throw more dry amendments basically into it, and it's good to go, depending on the previous grow. You know, maybe you had some deficiencies and you need to add a little bit of extra something. Those things kind of play in, but it's not super complicated, I don't think. Um, synthetics are, you know, just that right there. It's synthetic, they're synthesized, they're made in the lab, in a, in a, they're man-made. They're, we can do a lot of things and we do them really well, but I have a feeling there's a lot of side effects that we don't necessarily understand and know. And I'm not saying synthetic are bad for us, I'm just saying I feel like it's not sustainable, and if it's not sustainable, why are we doing it? Having said that, it doesn't mean I'm not going to use synthetics again. Um, they work. their place. Um, my personal preference is just using organics. So going over the organics again, uh, as a power bloom here by Gaia, I could go and I could buy this power bloom or I could get the individual ingredients that are in this and I could make up my own custom power bloom and that's kind of the route that I like. It's a more of um, a tuned feeding for your plant depending on what strain you're growing, depending on what results you want, and what problems you have. Like, uh, in here we have bone meal, mineralized phosphate, fish bone, rock phosphate, uh, mine potassium sulfate, glacial rock dust, insect grass, feather meal, uh, basalt rock dust, uh, kelp meal, humic acid, gypsum, green sand, blood meal. You can get all those from Guy and you can make your own. And that's basically what I'm starting to do with my, uh, my power bloom. If that sounds like a lot, it's not really, because when you're using the synthetics, you can see I have three different bottles here. 
this comes in a three-part solution. This is your beginner level. This is your novice or entry level feeding. You have to use all three of these bottles in different amounts depending on the stage of your plant. Same thing that you'd be doing with this. Just it's organic. It's different. Um, if I was to go and buy all these different ones and mix my own, that would be like using the more uh, intermediate or expert level of these. Uh, you can add bottles to these that are beyond these three ones, and they contain different things. It's a lot of different things, and they're going to make your plant grow better. It's going to give you more, but you're going to have to understand more about it. It's less basic. It's less novice. Um, so both, they're both really the same thing. It, it's just a matter of preference. My recommend re my recommendation would be if you're a beginner grower, try out the salt base. It's try out specifically this pH perfect. You don't have to worry about pH in your water, at, almost at all. Like, while using it, I never had a pH problem, and uh, that's nice. But um, check them out. It's advanced nutrients, pH perfect, three part. Um, it's really simple. It, it, it did well. I was happy with it. And uh, after you get a couple grows in, you kind of understand what the feeding does because feeding is, uh, it's not such a simple thing. The plant wants certain things at certain times and does certain things because it wants certain things. It's, it's complex. So once you get a basic understanding of, you know, what's in these and when you're giving them and what it's giving to your plant, you could move on to something more organic or something a little more complex if you wanted to add to these bottles and get the more extensive line of it. But um, just know that there's a difference between the two of them and there's a difference between using the pre-made mixtures, the base mixtures, and the entry-level nutrients. There is more out there. Don't think that you're limited. But, uh... Don't buy the cheap stuff. It's it's just it's never good <laughs> in my experience. But anyways, um, that's my little tutorial and coverage on organics versus synthetics. There's not a better one. Two plus two is four, and five minus one is four. It's the same thing really. But um, if you're not yet, like, subscribe, share, all that kind of stuff. Help me grow. Um, join us on Facebook at the Friendly Growers Club. Um, check out the comments. There should the description. There should be some uh, promo codes for a couple different places and a link for a couple different things that I just products that I, I really support. I make nothing from this. I just I do it to help people get good knowledge and good products. But uh, it's another video, so. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.